WWE are introducing another new title. Plus, AEW are making a major change to Grand Slam Australia. And Ricky Starks has commented on his AEW absence. It's all in the Cultaholic Wrestling News right now. Another new title in Double Double E? <laughs> Why not? It's Christmas after all. What's going on, Adam? Well, Tom, the Women's Intercontinental title is being introduced. We all saw it coming. It comes as no surprise to any of us, but it's, I think, wonderful, wonderful news. Uh, last night on Raw, Adam Pearce unveiling the strap. It's beautiful. It's white. I like it a lot. Um, and describing the IC title as a beacon of opportunity and a symbol of excellence for the workhorses. And he feels the same way about the Raw Women's Division, hence the introduction of the Women's IC title. It's tournament time! Yeah, beginning on Raw next week, they'll crown the first ever Women's Intercontinental title in title holder in due course. Uh, this announcement comes just a few weeks after they announced on SmackDown the Women's United States Championship uh, with a tournament that will conclude at Saturday night's main event. I wonder, and I said this in the news podcast this morning, I speculated that maybe you'll have both tournaments finish at Saturday night's main event, so you crown a new Women's Intercontinental Champion and a a new Women's United States champion on the same night. Yeah, I think it's, it's quite the possibility. Um, I'm looking forward to this. It's something that we've been asking for as fans for an awful long time. Hopefully it means uh, the women will get more TV time um, because I think for a long, long time in WWE, for the most part, um, if you're a female superstar, if you're not in the title picture, you don't get that many storylines. It's, no. it, it, it's it's title or nothing. There are exceptions, obviously, but hopefully this this is a a step forward, a step in the right direction. Who do you see bagging the women's IC strap? I was pondering this one, and uh, I genuinely think it might be a nice opportunity for someone like Ivy Nile. Oh, from the Creeds. Okay. Spoiler: In my version of WWE 2K24, I have had the Women's Intercontinental Title for some time, and Ivy Niles had it for a long time in my game. So I'd like that replicated in the real thing. I think very oh, much. I really like Ivy. I think Ivy's that's nice. Great. I think it's. It, it, do you go down the route of putting it on somebody pretty new like Ivy? In my mind, the first person that sprang to my mind in that category is Lyra. Valkyria. Yeah, that's um, a good shout. Or do you put it on a more established name to add a bit of legitimacy to the title? Um, and in that case, I'd probably go Kyrie Sane. Nice. I think Kyrie would make a brilliant first champion because it's such a big thing, isn't it? Like it, it's it's a new title, and you talk about like WWE talk about lineages all the time, and that first champion I think is really really important because they are going to be spoken about for as long as that title exists. So you want to make it a big deal. You want to make it somebody who's going to be in the company for the foreseeable, for a long time. Um, I'd really like Kyrie to do it. But Lyra, it'd be such a get for her, wouldn't it? Shayna Baszler wouldn't be a bad choice either. Yeah. Shayna with, with the Pure Fusion Collective around her. Uh, and then may, maybe it could be something that launches Zoe Stark. You have Zoe Stark take the belt from Shayna Baszler down the line, that's maybe. Nice. That's nice. Um, yeah, I think that's a possibility. I'd... Shayna's old though, isn't she? <laughs> oh, never ask a woman her age. That's what my dad always told me. Uh, I tell you what is old, and that is the the, the new day. It's old. Oh, but, oh. They are ten years, ten years old next week. Yeah, right. A decade of decadence from the lads in the new day. Celebrated next week, but it looks like. It might not even make it to 10 years at this rate. Goodness me. After losing a match to Alpha Academy, both Woods and Kingston uh, argued up the ramp. Kingston told Woods that he's never been a world champion because he's not good enough. Goodness me. And Woods accused Kofi of pissing it all away in just six seconds to Brock Lesnar. I mean, if you're going to do the split, then on the 10 year anniversary, there is no better time to do so. One would expect Big E to be there. <laughs> I don't know if Big E is cleared to do anything physical at all, but can you imagine how impactful it would be for, I assume, Woods to lay out Big E or do something horrible involving Big E? Maybe go for Kingston and Big E steps in the way and he clobbers Big E? It's an act, but I, I think if you're going to do it, make it big. 10 years, that doesn't mm. happen anymore in wrestling, does it? No, important things that, that need and needed to happen. One, me adjusting my chair, so I'm roughly your height now. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, big, don't make it higher to bully me. <laughs> it's bullying, that is. But also, Big E being a part of Raw next week. Oh, yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be. And, and it's funny, because in my head, it was the case, I thought maybe they might have Kofi and Woods at loggerheads with each other and it's Big E that comes out to appeal for calm to quote my nanny Doris all pals at the palace and everybody's fine but the idea of maybe Woods going I'm going to just lay you out 
Oh! I think the time has come, and I, I've, I've said for such a long time as well that I would never want the New Day to split. I didn't either, um, I don't. To, to me, it comes down to whether Big E will be able to wrestle again. If Big E's able to wrestle again, and that's in the not too distant future, and I think that's unlikely, unfortunately, it's gonna happen anytime soon. But you never know, Edge. Um, then keep them together because they are gold. But there's a big part of me that wants to see a Woods solo run that, because they're just gonna, they're, they're, they're floundering in like the tag division, aren't they? Which is, is mental to say because they're so good. They're one of the best WWE tag teams ever. Uh, but how much more can they do yeah. as well? There's nothing else to achieve. So maybe the time is now to do it. And as, as I say, if you're gonna do it, do it big on a big uh, celebratory episode. Overall. That's probably the way that you do it. Uh, meanwhile, over in AEW, the plan was to go big and is to go big in Australia for Grand Slam on February 15th, 2025. A 50,000-seater seater Suncorp Stadium in Brisbane is the location, at least for now. Fightful say they might be changing that, saying for those asking about the situation around the AEW Australia show, we're told a move to another venue is likely and it should be announced sooner than later. Uh, Wrestle, uh, WrestleTix, who track the ticket sales, obviously, for the wrestling events, uh, have said over the past week, the current seating map, map changed significantly with many seats removed and numerous sections becoming untrackable. While it was unclear if the map was in transition, there have been no further changes since then, and it now shows limited ticket availability. The show was originally scheduled to take place at the Suncorp Stadium in Brisbane, Australia. Initial VIP sales were encouraging, but after that, much of the map was still available in large quantity of available seats. It's it, it, not ideal at all um the ticket sales haven't been anywhere near as good as they had hoped to be so it's not really that big a surprise to see this potentially moving venue it's it's a massive massive country isn't it <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a... just it's huge there's there's no like right city to do it in i think they've picked a decent city but if you're in australia you might be like a several hour flight away from um, being able to make it if you're in if you're in a different location within australia well, wwe the hottest ticket in wrestling and, and that's not a shade that's just true we talked about this yesterday even they struggled with an australia stadium this year in in perth they didn't sell out elimination chamber did they not no right. and and i think aew as we have talked about has been on this on this decline in terms of of, of attendance for lots of shows all in whilst it was still an, an incredible achievement to get so many people into wembley the attendance was still down on the year before and we've seen a lot of a lot of shows across the states being down as well and i think a, a big failing has been i think with this with the promotion of it because I feel like you've rarely used any of the Australian talent to promote the show in Australia. You've got Australian talent on there now. You've obviously got Carl Fletcher, you've got Tony Storm in the mix mm -hmm. as well. But I feel like they haven't really... I, maybe I missed something. I know, I know Tony did some promo stuff and went back to her old training school in Australia fairly recently, but... I, I don't know whether or not they've really capitalized on it. They have Am Paul Roy out there. I, I don't know. And I think it's difficult for us to judge that one because we're literally on the opposite end of the world and we don't know much about the local advertising for it. Maybe they've been plastering billboards or doing lots of radio campaigns or something like that. So I'm not actually sure on that, but it's certainly going to be disappointing for AEW. I, I think it's it's the right call though, right? If, you, if you're not selling lots and lots of tickets, you don't want to show that on screen. That doesn't help... AEW out to do that so move it to a smaller slightly more intimate venue where people are going to be loud and it's going to be packed and it's going to look good on TV yeah exactly I think just I think that's the way you've got to do it but there is some good news for the future of AEW because we have an update on the Costco guys good news and bad news in <laughs> fact I think this is largely good news um, so during uh, the match um, at full gear uh, AJ said that he suffered a broken foot and he thinks it happened around the time that he landed a flying clothesline he just gutted it out he just cracked on with it he did the whole bloody rest of the match with a broken foot um and he's looking at eight weeks of recovery but it's not the last you're going to see of aj and co within AEW. no it is certainly not i will add to that the a little twist in the story because big boom aj on a video did say as we've put there oh i suffered a broken foot i think doing that flying clothesline mm -hmm. uh fifa went on to reveal that big boom aj actually broke his foot earlier in the day what a worker what a worker earlier in the day and kept it to himself fifa told he didn't want to 
disappointed fans who bought a ticket to see him and waste any promotion for the match. So he gutted it out from the moment he walked out there. He brought the boom with a broken freaking foot. He's like Kurt Angle in Atlanta 96. Put the belt on him. Put the, Put belt the big on one on him. Big Sorry, boom, AJ. Moxley. If anybody's going to stop the Death Riders, it's, <laughs> yes! it's this man and his children. Uh, no, like, <laughs> legit. <laughs> Fair play. This what? man and his children. Oh, sorry, only one of his children, isn't it? But yeah, like this man you... and some children. <laughs> what? We love... need more stables in AEW. <laughs> we do, there's not enough. Uh, big, this man and some children is my favourite stable now. Uh, there is good news, uh, as Adam said as well. Big Boom AJ confirmed on his official socials that he will return. He says, I've been in touch with Tony Khan and other executives at AEW. I'll be back in the ring. I'll be doing a few things with AEW during my recovery time, so stay tuned. Got some real fun stuff coming your way. Boom! Boom indeed. I'm, I'm buzzing about it. The fact that, like... I know he's an ex-wrestler, but like this is an influencer match, a celebrity match, if you will. And the fact that he broke his foot and then went out there, you weren't able to tell. Don't get me wrong. Right, this is going to sound mental, right? It was my favorite match of the night. Yeah. Tom, because, right, I cared. I, re I actually like... <sighs> It, it got me a little bit just because he's there with his son and that other child and it meant a lot to him and you could feel that there was actual emotion there um, and on, on AEW cards where like work rate is so integral right it's, it's, it's all about work rate it's on AEW pay-per-views this was this silly pantomime match that we all knew who, who the winner was going to be I just thought it was fun. It felt really different. And I, I'm not saying that I want AEW to bring in like every influencer under the sun or anything like that. Um, but I think we need a little bit more of this. I think we need a little bit more just like good, fun wrestling matches. Uh, it, it was the main event for me. It was the main event no, for was, you. It was a good laugh. It, it was a good laugh. I'm not saying it was the best match of the night in ring, but I think it was the most fun that I had. Oh, and that's, that, no, that's what wrestling's about, isn't it? Ricky Starks is desperate to have fun in an AEW ring once again. Uh, he's a guest on Insight with Chris Van Vliet. That dropped this morning. Uh, and he's revealed that while he did suffer a stinger during his match, his last match at AEW back in March, he's been cleared to compete for a long time. He's just been sat at home and something, as Ricky Starks said, he's not that happy about. It's a mind flip because I'm in my prime, he said. And it sucks when you're on such a momentum riding the wave and doing stuff and then just to be here at home for so long, it throws you off. He was asked why he thinks he's off TV. Stark said, beats me, beats me. I could have a thousand theories about what's really going on. Do I have speculations about why I'm not being used? Absolutely. I don't know what to make of this. I don't get it. I don't get it. It was backstage at the, at the pay-per-view. Um, I, I, I just don't understand. I don't, I don't know what's, what's going on. The fact that you're saying I've got speculations as to why, it's some sort of political implication there. Perhaps. Yeah. I don't know. It's going to be one hell of a shoot interview at some point with Ricky <laughs> Starks where all of this stuff is going to come out. But the fact that he was backstage at Full Gear gives some hope to maybe him coming back. Fingers crossed. I like him a lot. Yeah. He's good. You know what? Death Riders versus Ricky Starks and Big Boo AJ and some children. And some children. Yeah, I and like some that. children. That's, like, That's perfect. That is how we bring the boom to you. And we brought the news to you. And for the latest wrestling news at any time, you can check out cultaholic.com. Stay safe. Love you. Bye.